It's a new year, so that means it's time for another complete Blu-ray collection. What's going on guys, I'm Chris, and welcome back to another video. One of my favorite ones to do every year, and possibly the greatest workout for my arm ever. I'm going through my entire Blu-ray collection that just grows every single year. I've done one of these videos around the start of the year since like 2019, I wanna say, and so it's like a nice little benchmark every year to see how many Blu-rays I've picked up over the whole calendar year. I have all my movies alphabetized, and then I have a Criterion section. I have a few standalone box sets. My MCU is separate. My Pixar collection is separate, and also my Disney animated classics are separate as well. I have no clue how many I actually have, so if you wanna count the actual movies I own, and drop that in the comments down below. Let me know. What is your favorite movie collectible or movie that you own in your Blu-ray collection? And be sure to hit that like button. Without further ado, it's time to conquer the beast. I'm already out of breath and my arm is already starting to get tired, so. This is where the fun begins. All right, so the top of my shelf starts with some collectibles. I've got the Luke Skywalker lightsaber from Return of the Jedi, my absolute favorite hilt alongside Obi-Wan from Revenge of the Sith. Then I've got my Home Alone Funko Pops with Marv, Kevin McAllister, and Harry. Then I've got this Millennium Falcon popcorn bucket that I got from Disney World. Doc Brown from the first Back to the future when Marty visits and he's got the plans to the little flux capacitor and then this little DeLorean model that I actually got from Universal Studios. It lights up like that so that's pretty cool. Yeah so that's the top of my Blu-ray collection. So starting in alphabetical order and I apologize if there's any shaky cam. I've got 8 Mile, a movie that inspires the hell out of me and Lose Yourself is an absolute banger. Let's be honest Eminem kind of slaps. Then we got 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street. My favorite comedies arguably from the past decade. 1917, a movie I've seen once in theaters. That was a little overrated. Got it on a Black Friday deal. I need to rewatch it still. The Alfred Hitchcock Essentials Collection with Rear Window, Vertigo, North by Northwest, Psycho, and The Birds. Psycho, by far my favorite here, but Rear Window does slap. I've seen the other movies once each. I want to rewatch Vertigo soon. Alien, which has a six slip cover, and then Aliens, this cool little collector's edition I got on Amazon. Need to rewatch both. It's been since 2020 since I've seen them, but I remember enjoying the first one a little bit more. Then I got American Beauty. American Psycho, a movie that I quote with my friends to an unhealthy extent, probably. The movie's dark comedy at its best. Animal House. I should be wearing my college shirt today. That would be fitting, but yeah. Animal Animal House is a comedy classic. Aquaman, I don't even know why I own this. I think it's all right. Arthur Christmas, a movie that's actually got a lot of charm to it. I did, I did try to rewatch it for the first time in years this year though, and I started to doze, but it's still sweet. Baby Driver, a movie with some of the best editing ever. The Back to the Future trilogy, 1.21 gigawatts, great Scott, love it. The Batman Steelbook, this thing is a thing of beauty, and this is the definitive Batman movie in my eyes. Then we got the Dark Knight trilogy with Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises with this really cool lenticular slipcover. I think this was a Target exclusive I got for Christmas in 2012. The trilogy here is one of the best trilogies of all time, and the and Dark Knight Rises is super overhated. I love that movie. BVS on Steelbook. Uh, this movie, again, <laughs> I think I bought it because the Steelbook's just sick. The movie's fine, borderline bad. Moving on, The Big Lebowski. What a comedy classic this is. This movie makes me laugh the hardest, arguably, out of any comedy. It's so quotable. I could go for a white Russian right about now. Then we got The Big Sick, a really underappreciated movie and one of the better rom-coms of the last 10 years. By the way, I'm already starting to sweat profusely. If you guys film Blu-ray collections, let me know because these things are a true workout the way I do them at least. Then we got Big Trouble in Little China. Shout out Nathan Jones for sending this over many years ago. It's a really fun movie. John Carpenter, 80s flick. Birdman, a movie that has a really glorious slipcover and I've only seen once. Birds of Prey. Boogie Nights. This movie is fantastic, and I really like Babylon because it's very similar to Boogie Nights and a, a few movies that I'm going to talk about later in this collection. The Bourne Trilogy with Identity, Supremacy, and Ultimatum. Don't own any other Bourne movies because those are by far the best. Braveheart. And dying in your beds many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! All-timer. The Breakfast Club, 80s classic. Bullet Train, a top five movie of 2022 for me. Just such a blast and unexpected fun. Bullet, I'm really pumped for the Steven Spielberg movie he's directing. I believe it's a sequel with Bradley Cooper playing Frank Bullet. Sign me the hell up. Butch Cassie and the Sundance Kid, a classic western. Casablanca, of all the gin joints and all the towns in all the world. She walks in the mine. Casino Royale, arguably my favorite Bond movie and probably my favorite Daniel Craig alongside Skyfall. Castaway, Wilson! I need to rewatch it soon. It's been since high school health class since I've watched this movie. Catch me if you can, underrated Spielberg that I got to revisit. Christmas Vacation, a little bit of an overrated Christmas movie, but still has its fun moments, and I do laugh hard at what Cousin Eddie just spews. He's funny. Clueless with this wacky looking steelbook. Collateral, what a badass movie. Tom Cruise, one of his better roles because he's sort of a villain. It's dark, it's gritty. You gotta check it out if you haven't seen it. Cool Hand Luke, sometimes nothing can be a real cool hand. Creed and Creed 2. I'm very excited for Creed 3. I hope it's better than Creed 2, even though I really like both. I've only seen this one once in theater. 
theaters, and I've seen this one multiple times. Cruella de Vil, Cruella de Vil. Cruella was a lot of fun in a darker Disney live action remake. This is what they need to do where it like takes the original story and makes its own. This is the kind of Disney live action remake I support. Deadpool and Deadpool 2, both really solid. And The Departed, I adore this movie. It's one of those like what the hell just happened movies in the last 15 minutes. Then we got Die Hard, one of my favorite Christmas movies. And if you don't think it's a Christmas movie, argue with me in the comments, please. I want it. Die Hard 2, Die Harder and Die Hard with a Vengeance, almost as good as the first. By the way, Die Hard 2, also a Christmas movie. Check it out. The Disaster Artist. Oh, hi, Mock. <laughs> Django! Django Unchained, a damn great Tarantino film. Dodgeball, I've been wanting to rewatch this lately. Donnie Darko, a movie that destroyed my mind the first time I watched it, but then I went back the next day and watched the director's cut and appreciated it much more. Dunkirk, with the slipcover, because my brother is currently borrowing this movie, but Dunkirk is a great Nolan movie that shows war from various perspectives, and I actually really, really like this one. It, I had to think on it when I first saw it in theaters, but I've seen it like five times. I haven't rewatched it in a few years, but I do enjoy the movie. Elf. Every time I think of Elf, I think of Pennies from Heaven and him walking down the street and how they had to chew a bunch of gum and put it on those rails so it wasn't like actually rancid gum that he put in his mouth. E.T classic Spielberg. Everything Everywhere All at Once, my sixth favorite movie of the year. I've only seen once in theaters and I've really wanted to rewatch this one lately. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, another classic 80s movie. The Fighter. <laughs> If you got that nod, obviously you've seen the movie I just referenced, but The Fighter, a movie with Christian Bale's best performance, arguably, and Marky Mark being great. He had a good little run back in the 20, early 2010s. First Man, a Chazelle movie I've seen once in theaters. Cut loose, foot loose. The 2011 movie is Me and My Girlfriend's, one of our go-to movies. Miles Teller's hilarious in this. It's just a fun remake. Go dogs! Ford v Ferrari, a glorious steelbook. Forrest Gump, Lieutenant Dan! <laughs> From that day on, if I was going somewhere, I was running. This is an all-timer for me. Frosty the Snowman. Get Out, Jordan Peele's best movie, and I don't see him ever topping it. Ghostbusters 1 and 2. The second movie's a snoozer. The first one is a little overrated, but still a classic. And Ghostbusters Afterlife, a surprising hit of 2021. I'm excited for the new one that comes out this year. Gladiator. I always butcher his little monologue. Probably one of the best Best Picture winners of the century, I should say. The Godfather trilogy. I've only seen the first two. I've avoided the third, but I'm going to try and watch it this year. By the way, I'm profusely sweating right now, and I'm only through the first row, so this is going to be a long one. So hope you have your popcorn ready. Getting a good shoulder workout in today. But if you guys are watching, comment down below how Hashtag Happy New Year. All right, moving on to the next row, we've got Gone Girl. Fincher always does his movies in these weird little boxes that are like backwards, but Gone Girl's a movie I've seen once. It was disturbing, but it was damn good. Good Will Hunting. This is an all-timer for me. Like a top four, top three, arguably my favorite movie of all time. I just rewatched it. This movie inspires me. I want to have no regrets in life because of this movie. I want to better myself. This is the perfect movie. If you're still coming to my house in 20 years watching the Patriots game, I'll fucking kill you. Son of a bitch, you stole my line. My boy's wicked smart. I mean, I could quote this movie for days. Goodfellas might be just the best Scorsese movie ever. I need to rewatch a lot of Scorsese movies before Killers of the Flower Moon. Green Book, a movie that I've seen once. It won Best Picture, and it was a heartwarming story. It, it pulled on the heartstrings. I don't get the hate. The Green Mile. A movie that honestly will emotionally traumatize you probably, but it's another one from the director of Shawshank, Frank Darabont, and it's damn good. It's not as good as Shawshank, but it's great stuff. Hacksaw Ridge might be Garfield's best performance, though he keeps outdoing himself every year. Halloween and Halloween 2018. I'm probably going to throw this one away soon. <laughs> and this is a classic horror movie. I'm not going to deny it, but I don't know if I'll ever rewatch them because, I mean, Halloween ends and Halloween kills were both trash, in my opinion. The Hangover, the only Hangover movie I've seen and probably will ever see. It's very funny, but I was a little late to the party and watched it for the first time, like, last year. The Harry Potter 8 film collection. These movies are pure magic. I didn't grow up with them, but I watched them when I was, like, 18 for the first time. Listening to the score by Williams and the Sorcerer's Stone, like, that takes me to a happy place. These movies are pure escapism, and to me, might be the most consistently great franchise from start to finish. There's no hiccups. The Hateful Eight, one of my least favorite Tarantino movies, but it's not bad. It's just long as hell, and it's just not as strong with script. Heat, a damn good heist movie. Hell or High Water, one I desperately need to rewatch. Holes, dig them up, up, holes, dig them. Zero! This is like a childhood classic right here, and this is a really cool little, like, Disney movie club thing that I got from eBay. It's like, it's a cool Blu-ray. And that TikTok audio of, I'm tired of this, Grandpa. Well, that's too damn bad. That's from Holes. Home Alone on Steelbook and Home Alone 2, my, arguably my two favorite Christmas movies. This right here, Home Alone, I could quote this movie from beginning to end. It is my favorite Christmas movie of all time. Hoosiers. Horrible Bosses. Funny as hell. I also like the second one. I need to own it. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. The definitive version of this story and the only one I acknowledge. The Hunger Games, all four movies, really pumped for the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes that comes out later this year. If I had to rank these movies real quick for you, I actually have a video somewhere on my channel, but Catching Fire is my favorite, then the first, and then Mockingjay 2, and then Mockingjay 1. I, Tanya. I think this is Sebastian Stan's best performance and Margaret 
Robbie's best performance. Both of them should have won Oscars. And Inception, my favorite Nolan movie and just the score time by Hans Zimmer. Inject that into my veins right now. Starting in the next section, we've got Indiana Jones, The Complete Adventures. Indiana Jones is like a childhood hero of mine and I am beyond excited for Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny. My most anticipated movie possibly ever. I adore these. I just rewatched all four and I'm going to rewatch them again before the new one. Inglorious Bastards. How about you, you Mitch? You make that deal? I make that deal. Damn good deal. Antonio Margariti. I could quote the hell out of this movie and it's my second favorite Tarantino. Interstellar. Talk about a trippy movie that will destroy your mind in a good way. Visually stunning, of course, but that score, oh my gosh, I could listen to it on a loop and it'll make me want to run infinite amount of miles. The Invisible Man, a really good Lee Waddell movie. It, I enjoy it. The second one though, I don't talk about. It's a Wonderful Life is an all-time classic movie that I rewatched for the first time in years this holiday season. Really made me rethink my life and just honestly have a new appreciation for so many things and just be thankful for the moment, friends and family, not get too caught up in the future and the hustle and bustle of life. Really a simple and effective message and a damn good film. One of the all-time best, I would say. Also, the scene where they're dancing and the floor starts to, you know, go away and they jump in the pool. I saw that in 11th grade English and it's always been stuck in my head. Jackie Brown, underrated Tarantino. The James Bond collection. Sorry if it's going in and out of focus. This is, I think, up to Spectre. I haven't seen enough James Bond movies and I was going to watch them all before No Time to Die, so I have a lot of homework to do at some point in my life. And by the way, I've seen majority of these movies. The only movies I haven't seen I'm going to talk about at the end, and then you've got Godfather 3 and then a lot of these James Bond movies, but I've seen most of the movies. I'm not huge into blind buying. Jaws, probably a top 20 movie for me. I watch this one at least once a year or try to. Spielberg is just the goat. Joker, how about another joke, Murray? Jurassic Park, another classic Spielberg movie the best Jurassic Park movie, and it's not even close. Jurassic World, I mean, it's fine. The Karate Kid, for those who are Cobra Kai fans watching, I've had this steelbook since long before I ever watched Cobra Kai, long before Cobra Kai came out. Um, I've always enjoyed this movie, and then I never watched part two, really. Growing up, I'd seen it once, and I rewatched all three, including part three for the first time, then fell in love with Cobra Kai, and now I appreciate the hell out of the steelbook anymore. I mean, that's a thing of beauty. I appreciate Kreese and all these characters more. I mean, Johnny, come on. It's just a beautiful piece of art that I want to hang on the wall. In the Cobra Kai series, I reacted to every episode on my channel. So if you guys are new here, check that out. I had a blast with that show. But what I desperately want to own is like the 4K box set of all three, but I think it's out of print now. Kill Bill Volume 1 and Kill Bill Volume 2. I prefer Volume 1. King Richard and Kingsman 2 movie collection. The King's Man I don't own and probably never will. I actually like The Golden Circle more than most. Country Road, take me home. Very solid action movies. I'm excited for the third one. Sorry, this next section, we've got Knives Out. I still prefer this over Glass Onion, but both movies are damn great murder mysteries and I can't wait for part three. La La Land on Steelbook. This is probably my favorite Steelbook in my entire collection if I had to pick one. It's just truly a thing of beauty and this movie, Here's to the Fools Who Dream, what an inspiring movie this is. It's one of my, me and my girlfriend's favorites and it's one of the first dates we ever went out to the movie theater actually. Last Night in Soho. I loved this movie when I first saw it in theaters and I haven't thought about it much since so maybe I need to give it another shot. I gave it like a five out of five on Letterboxd which you can follow me down below. I enjoyed it. I think I might have overrated it a bit though. Les Mis. Two Four, six, oh, one. I am warning you, Javier. This movie slaps, and me and my girlfriend watch it a lot, actually. Licorice Pizza, I got this on a Black Friday deal. It wasn't my favorite PTA movie, but I did have a pretty fun time with it, and Bradley Cooper's scene steal the show. Little Women, Greta Gerwig, damn good movie, damn good performances. Gotta rewatch it before Barbie. Logan. Logan! <laughs> this is the perfect send-off to this character, and I'm excited for Deadpool 3 to see him back in action. The Lord of the Rings trilogy. I have the theatrical cut, not the extended editions. I rewatched these for the first time in years over the summer and just was so immersed. This is pure fantasy storytelling at its finest. Love these movies. Seven, seven... The Magnificent Seven, Seven. This is a classic Western I grew up with. You know, Yul Brenner, Steve McQueen, James Coburn, I believe Charles Bronson. I mean, this is classic stuff right here. And the remake with Denzel and Chris Pratt is also a lot of fun. Anton Fuqua directed it pretty well. Not as good, but might be more rewatchable. Magnolia, a PTA epic that will probably depress you. However, Tom Cruise should have won an Oscar. The Martian, one of the best space movies I've seen. Mary Poppins, Chim Chimney, Chim Chimney, Chim Chim Chiray, a sweet is as lucky as lucky can be. Classic with a great Steelbook and Mary Poppins Returns, not as good, but has a banger of a soundtrack. Mean Girls, I actually watched this for the first time in 10th grade guided study, which was essentially study hall. My teacher was like, you guys need to shut the hell up, so I'm just gonna play a bunch of random movies, and this was one of them. Memento, a trippy ass movie. Mid 90s, Jonah Hill's directorial debut, and one of my favorite from A24. Miracle, great moments are born from great opportunity. And that's what we have here tonight, gentlemen. I'm sick and tired of hearing about how great the Soviets are. Screw them, tonight is your night. This is one of the best sports movies ever. It contains one of the best motivational speeches. 
movies ever by Kurt Russell as Herb Brooks. The Mission Impossible 5 movie collection with fallouts. I mean, the Mission Impossible movies are like the pinnacle of action movies today. Mission Impossible 7 is just going to outdo this one somehow. Hell yeah, I can't wait to rewatch these this summer. Moneyball, a movie that I adore and it's honestly probably creeped into my top 10 all time. It has inspiring music. It's a perfect script from Sorkin and the story is just so damn uplifting. There are rich teams and there are poor teams and there's 50 feet of crap. And then there's us. Quality. Mystic River, one of the darkest movies I've probably seen in recent years. Came out in like 2003. Great performances from Sean Penn and uh, Tim Robinson. Oscar winners for this movie. Damn good like murder mystery if you can handle some dark subject matter. And National Treasure, one of my all-time faves. I'm gonna steal a Declaration of Independence. Sweat is now dripping down my back. So if you guys have made it, I think we're like at the halfway point right now. Comment down below, hashtag National Treasure because that was like the halfway movie. All right, on to the next row, we got National Treasure 2 Book of Secrets. A really solid sequel and we need, we need the trilogy. I haven't watched the show yet. I'll probably wait till it's all out and binge it, but we desperately need the trilogy. The Other Guys, this movie's hilarious. One of the most quotable comedies I've ever seen. No Country for Old Men. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? I did a whole report on this book in like 12th grade English class. I love it. It's one of the best directed movies ever. No Time to Die. I've seen it once in theaters. Old School, a hilarious comedy. Me and my friends quote this one a lot. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You're Rick fucking Dalton. Don't you forget it. This is my favorite Tarantino movie, and I love this cover art. I mean, Cliff Booth and Rick Dalton are just the coolest dudes. Seeing two real life movie stars play movie stars you know it's fun it is like the best ultimate hangout movie parasite best picture winner that's great all right i just grabbed the chair since i'm so low to the ground now the peanuts holiday collection charlie brown christmas is a classic it's my favorite of those three pirates of the caribbean the curse of the black pearl pirates of the caribbean the dead man's chest pirates of the caribbean at world's end childhood films right here i mean this is one of my favorite trilogies i don't acknowledge the other two movies at all and like I would take a stack just like this on DVD in my car as a kid and watch them on road trips. Two is arguably my favorite, but one is the best, I think. The Planet of the Apes trilogy. I think we're getting a, th a fourth movie or like a prequel or sequel or something, but I haven't watched these since War came out and I want to rewatch them. I'll probably save it for that new movie though. I think it's called like Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes maybe. Point Break. It's just pure cheesy fun. Never saw the remake, but I watched this in 2020 during my 100 movies I missed as I drop it. Gary Busey might have stole the show though. Utah, give me two. Talking about the damn meatball subs, that's great. Polar Express, you know, I grew up with this. It was that traditional like end of the year movie we watched the day before Christmas break. It is a childhood classic for me, though it does get a little less rewatchable every year, but like Believe by Josh Groban, that song goes hard and it always stirs up the magic in me. The Press Stage. <laughs> Michael Caine is in like every single movie that Nolan does, but this is my third or second. I think it's actually my second favorite Nolan movie. Prisoners, I mean, you guys already know it's all hyped up because it, it deserves it. Denis Villeneuve's best movie. Pulp Fiction, like it's popular to hate on this movie. I'll always love it. It's like my third favorite Tarantino probably. It's another all-timer in my opinion with one of the best scripts ever. And yet again, it's another quotable movie. Tarantino is very good at writing quotable characters. A Quiet Place on Steelbook. And A Quiet Place 2 on Steelbook. I need to rewatch 2. I've only seen the first one, I think, twice. I've only seen this one once in theaters. Fun fact, when I went to see Black Widow, they started the second time, actually, because I saw that twice in theaters. They started playing this, and I was like, damn, maybe we should just go watch that again. Remember the Titans. This is, like, my third favorite movie of all time, my favorite sports movie. I quote it constantly in, like, videos and just daily life. Super inspiring and just will always be one of my favorite movies. Reservoir Dogs, Tarantino's first and one of his best still. I mean, every single movie could be one of his best. Rocket Man. Taron Edgerton was snubbed of any Oscar love. Rocky, the heavyweight collection. I can't wait to rewatch these before Creed. Rudolph, the red nosed reindeer, and Santa Claus is coming to town. The Santa Claus trilogy, the first one's by far the best. Two is really solid, and three doesn't hold up with age, but it's still fun to watch as part of the trilogy. Saving Private Ryan, the best war movie ever made. Saw on Steelbook. Saw the seven film collection with Saw one through seven and Spiral. My voice is starting to fade, my apologies, but this steelbook's gorgeous. The only Saw movie I don't own is Jigsaw, and I'll probably get that eventually, even though it's terrible. <laughs> the Saw movies are like me and my girlfriend's guilty pleasure movies. We watch them with the pretty much it commentary tracks, just makes everything better, but the first one is a truly great horror movie. School of Rock, this movie rules. Scream, I need to own the other movies. This is by far the best, but it's a really fun horror franchise. The Shawshank Redemption, one of the greatest films ever made. Shazam, probably own this for the slipcover, but it's also fun. She's the Man, a movie me and my girlfriend also really enjoy. Here's Johnny. The Shining. Shooter, a movie I watched like 30 times on the channel TNT growing up. It's one that I just watched with my like dad all the time. Mark Ward, Marky Mark, baby. Bobby Lee Swagger. Silver Linings Playbook, a perfect movie. Seriously, one of the best like romantic comedies out there. And it got nominated for Oscars. It's a damn good movie. Singing in the Rain. This movie might be the ultimate feel-good movie ever. It's a perfect musical and just you gotta watch it if you haven't seen it. Will make you just fall in love with movies. Sky High. This is a childhood film that still holds up and is a banger. Skyfall, again, this or Casino is my favorite Craig Bond. The Social Network. 
work. Fincher at it again with these weird ass covers, but I like to keep this little black slip cover on because it looks cool. But The Social Network again, probably a top 10 movie for me. The hills are alive with the sound of music. Another ultimate feel good musical movie. Me and my girlfriend love musicals and this is a work of art. One day I want to go to Austria and visit where they film. Spectre, kind of an underwhelming Bond movie. All right, so finishing out this last section, we've got Speed on Steelbook, a movie that I need to rewatch soon, but I remember watching it for the first time in a Disneyland hotel room at 5 a.m. My body was not adjusted to the West Coast time. Very fun action flick. The Raimi Spider-Man trilogy, just classic stuff from my childhood. Into the Spider-Verse, we get a new Spider-Verse movie this year, which should be fun. A Star is Born should have won all the Oscars in 2018. Star Wars The Complete Saga, which is the prequels and the originals. The original trilogy is my favorite trilogy of all time. The prequels I have a very big soft spot for. The Force Awakens, Last Jedi. Uh -huh. I don't even know why I own those. And then Solo, which is a lot of fun. I need to own Rogue One. I used to and I sold it for some reason. Step Brothers, a hilarious quotable movie. Steve Jobs, another fantastic Sorkin script. Michael Fassbender should have won the Oscar over Leo for The Revenant, by the way. The Suicide Squad, the best DCEU movie in my opinion. Super bad. Maybe the funniest movie I've ever seen. I love it. I feel you, Joanna. Sweeney Todd, my favorite Tim Burton movie and it has aged like fine wine for me since I first watched it. Talladega Nights, The Battle of Ricky Bobby, if you ain't first or last. Taxi Driver, a classic score Scorsese maybe is best. Ted, a fine kind of throwaway comedy. Tenet, a trippy movie that I saw twice back to back in theaters when it came out. I can't wait to rewatch this this year before Oppenheimer. John Carpenter's The Thing. Practical effects at their best, especially in horror. This is the end of a movie that is hilarious. Three billboards, I still need to see Banshees of Inisherin. And Titanic with this disgusting, sticky stuff on the slipcover. Another one of those just must-see movies in your life. The alphabetical kind of takes a gap because I have a few other sections of movies in the middle of the shelf. But we've got Top Gun, an 80s classic, but it's not as good as Top Gun Maverick on Steelbook. Shout out Jason Carr for sending the Steelbook over to me. Truly a thing of beauty, but this is my favorite movie of 2022. And an all-time great, I think years from now, we'll look back and be like, oh my gosh, remember when we saw Top Gun Maverick in theaters? Box office smash hit, and we just don't get practical effects, action, blockbusters like this with a lot of heart. Perfect movie, in my opinion. Training Day. King Kong ain't got shit on me. This might be my favorite Denzel performance. He won the Oscar for a reason. Tropic Thunder. It could never happen today, probably. The Truman Show. I remember watching this and having my mind blown in like the eighth grade. The Twilight Saga. Some of these movies are so bad, they're good. I watched them with my girlfriend. It's like guilty pleasure entertainment. Uncut Gems. A Heart Attack. Us. I actually prefer this over Nope, and that steelbook is so clean. West Side Story, the original. I love this movie. I listen to the original soundtrack from the movie way more than the new one, but both movies are still solid. I don't own the new one because it is on Disney+. Plus. Whiplash, top 10 all-time movie for me. I may have a video coming with my girlfriend regarding this movie by the end of the year. I quote this one and all of Fletcher's insults with my friends, like, a lot. It might be unhealthy. White Christmas. I got this as a stocking stuffer one year, and I really enjoyed it. I've seen it once. Not a perfect movie, but it's a sweet little Christmas musical. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. You bet your ass I'll be rewatching this before Wonka comes out at the end of the year. The Wizard of Oz, Follow the Yellow Brick Road, another classic movie. Every time I see this, I think of the great movie ride from Walt Disney World. A movie that kind of traumatized me as a child because of that one section where the like driver leaves and turns into a skeleton in like the Indiana Jones area, but it's classic. The Wolf of Wall Street, I mean, might be Leo's best performance. Wonder Woman, X-Men First Class, damn good movie. This weird two-pack that actually left room for Apocalypse. So this is like the new trilogy of movies. I don't have Dark Phoenix or any of the other X-Men movies besides Logan or the Deadpool movies. And then Zombieland is the last in the alphabetical order. All right, if you guys are still watching, comment down below, hashtag 2023. Okay, so now that we're done with the alphabetical, we're getting into my Walt Disney animated classic section, sorted by year of release date. So first off, we have... Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. We get a new one with Rachel Zegler live action. I'm pumped. Pinocchio, Pinocchio. I love Jiminy Cricket. This is a classic story. I actually was really excited for the Tom Hanks one that came out last year. I just never got around to it because it was getting trashed and I didn't want to taint my image of this movie. I also haven't seen the Del Toro adaptation. I'm sure it's really great. Peach Pan, classic stuff. I just watched Hook for the first time. Damn good movie. Like had me tearing up, was magical. Rest in peace, Robin Williams. I need to own Hook now. Cruella de Vil, Cruella de Vil, 101 Dalmatians, The Jungle Book. This was like my favorite as a kid. King Louis and like all the music. I loved Baloo and the relationship with, you know, Bagheera and Mowgli. This is like one of my favorite childhood movies. And speaking of The Jungle Book, the live action, quote unquote, you know, CGI, hyper realistic remake. This is, I think, my favorite live action Disney remake right alongside Cruella. This is like what they need to do. The Little Mermaid, excited for the new one that comes out in May. Beauty and the Beast and the live action remake on Steelbook. Both of these movies slap. This one got nominated for Best Picture. 
This one has a great soundtrack. They added Evermore. That song goes hard. Aladdin, just another top five, probably, animated Disney movie. The Lion King, my favorite Disney animated movie and my favorite animated movie of all time. It is just perfect. Tangled, this is my girlfriend's favorite Disney movie and one that I also love. Banger soundtrack and Flynn Rider's The Goat. Wreck-It Ralph, a really cool steelbook. Frozen. I was late to the party on Frozen, surprisingly, but I do like, I like the soundtrack almost more than the movie, but the movie is still good, even though it has so much hype. Moana. How far I'll go, what can I say except you're welcome. And then Raya and the Last Dragon. I haven't seen it since theaters, but the steelbook is so nice. All right, so now we're getting into the MCU, which I'm actually gonna speed round because I've talked about these movies so much on my channel. We've got Iron Man, top five MCU for me. Incredible Hulk, cool slipcover, eh, movie. Iron Man 2 is an overhated MCU movie. Four, it's fine. The first Avenger, classic MCU stuff. And then to end phase one, we've got the Avengers, which I will cherish seeing this in theaters forever. Iron Man 3, I didn't love when I first saw it, but it's fine now. Thor The Dark World, a bottom tier MCU movie with a really cool slipcover though. The Winter Soldier, another overrated MCU movie, but it's still top 10 for me, so don't get mad. I love it, it's just overhyped, I think. Guardians of the Galaxy, a top six MCU movie, maybe top five. Age of Ultron with the red case, this movie is underappreciated. It's still a really good Avengers movie. It's the first time we see them as like a family together. Ant-Man, pure fun with the black Blu-ray case. Civil War, a top tier MCU movie. Doctor Strange, maybe the best visuals in the MCU. Guardians 2, it's fine. Spider-Man Homecoming, overhated movie, tons of fun, and Vulture is a top tier elite MCU villain. Thor Ragnarok's kind of regressing with age for me. Black Panther, Infinity War, I mean this is my favorite MCU movie, come on. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Captain Marvel, a bottom three MCU movie I think. Endgame twice, I mean this is the best conclusion I could have ever asked for, it's my second favorite MCU movie. This and Infinity War are perfect. Far From Home, another overhated MCU movie. A lot of fun, Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio is the man. Then we've got Black Widow with a really cool slipcover. That's like one of the better Phase 4 MCU movies. It feels like early MCU, which is good compared to what we've been getting. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, my second favorite Phase 4 movie and just a blast. Some of the best action in the MCU. Eternals. It's fine. I've seen it like two or three times. It's okay. And Spider-Man No Way Home. Glorious Steelbook top five MCU movie. I'll never forget seeing this in theaters. It is the definitive Spider-Man movie when it comes to giving us all three Spider-Man and just telling a fantastic Spider-Man story. In the same little square of my shelf, I got my Pixar collection starting with the Toy Story trilogy and Toy Story 4. Uh, Toy Story 3 is my favorite. It's my second favorite Pixar movie. It actually goes back and forth for my favorite, but yeah, Toy Story 3, you can't beat it. Monsters Inc., a glorious Steelbook and a top three or four Pixar movie. Finding Nemo. I watched this movie a thousand times in school growing up, so it's harder to rewatch now, but it is still an elite movie from Pixar. And Finding Dory, a cute little sequel. The Incredibles, a top five Pixar movie, and just a badass movie, really. This is one of the best superhero movies of our lives. Incredibles 2 gets the short end of the stick. It's a really solid follow-up. Nothing's gonna top the original in terms of sequels, but it's still great. Ratatouille on Steelbook, my favorite Pixar movie, arguably my favorite animated movie alongside The Lion King and Toy Story 3. I mean, this movie makes me want to chase my dreams and just live my life to the fullest. Up, my girlfriend's favorite Pixar our movie and a movie that will make you cry. It is inevitable. Look at how glorious that steelbook is. Let's just appreciate that for a second. Inside Out. We're getting a sequel, I think, in like a few years, which is wild. But yeah, this is one of the most creative concepts in Pixar. Remember me, though I have to say goodbye. Remember me. This movie will make you cry, Coco. And Onward, the most underappreciated movie out of all of Pixar's catalog. A lot of people will look back on this in like 20 years and appreciate it more. It came out at an awful time, like the week COVID started. And then right below that section, I have the Breaking Bad complete series on Blu-ray and El Camino on Steelbook. I will own Better Call Saul eventually. I love Better Call Saul and I want to get like an ultimate collector's edition of that as well. And the last section on my shelf is my criterion section. I did blind buy some of these. I'm kind of picky and choosy when it comes to those anymore. So first up we've got Seven Samurai, a movie that you just have to watch at some point in your life. It is phenomenal. It's inspired countless stories that kind of took the plot of this movie. It is a must-see epic. Now we got The Silence of the Lambs, a movie that is terrifying psychologically and Anthony Hopkins gets one of the best performances maybe ever. Hidden Fortress, another great Kurosawa movie that I watched watched for the first time. I blind bought it and it inspired elements of Star Wars, the original film, so I had to check it out. Notorious, a great Hitchcock movie. Dazed and Confused. All right, all right, all right. You just gotta keep living, man. L-I-V-I-N. I quote the hell out of Dazed and Confused. Wooderson, played by McConaughey, is just that guy. And this movie is one of the best, like, coming of age high school flicks out there. The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, my second or third favorite Fincher movie, and it's very, like, Forrest Gump in terms of chronicling someone's life and just being, like, moving. Twelve Angry Men, another one that everyone has seen 
see at some point in their lives. I gotta rewatch it soon, but this is cinema. Christopher Nolan's first ever movie, Following. I'll probably watch all his movies before Oppenheimer, so I'll be checking this out again. The Man Who Knew Too Much. I actually bought this thinking it was the James Stewart version. Hitchcock made the same movie twice, though. You know, I watched it. It was fine. I'll never watch it again, but I own it. On the Waterfront. I could have had class. I could have been a contender. Marlon Brando. If he didn't ever did The Godfather, this would go down as his best performance from what I've seen. Only seen it once in my life. Not a very rewatchable movie, but a damn good one at that. Punch Drunk Love. Adam Sandler doing serious roles is a must. I can't wait for him to do another movie with the Safties, but this is a good PTA movie. Pan's Labyrinth. Still on the wrapper? Why, you might ask? Because I haven't seen it. I know. Shoot me in the comments. It's on my watch list. The Princess Bride. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. This is one of those feel-good 80s classic movies. I watched it for the first time in like 2017, maybe? In the Heat of the Night, Sidney Poitier. Rest in peace. Failsafe, a Sidney Lumet film that I have never seen. It's still in the wrapper. It's one of the two Criterions I own that I haven't seen. Grand Budapest Hotel, my favorite Wes Anderson movie. I have I need to explore a lot of his films still. I don't love his style, but this is my favorite for sure that I've seen. The Great Escape, a movie that I grew up watching with my dad, and this is like my favorite war slash prison movie probably as a lawnmower turns on outside, so I apologize. <laughs> The last hour when they're doing the prison break is great, and they even reference it in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The Irishman. With a knife you run, with a gun you charge. <laughs> My friends and I quote this movie a lot when it came out, and I had the criterion even though it's on Netflix. It's long as shit, there's no denying that, but it is still great. And then Fast Times at Ridgemont High, another great like coming of age high school hangout movie. And the last three movies I have are the How to Train Your Dragon trilogy that I bought on Black Friday. I've never seen them, I know. I'm ashamed, I'm gonna watch them this year. Unhinged, shout out to Jason Carr for sending this to me. I'm going to do a reaction to this at some point this year because I'm going to get into like movie commentary slash reactions so stay tuned and then Gifted a movie with Chris Evans that my girlfriend said oh you should buy this it was like five bucks at Best Buy one day and I was like maybe I'll watch it one day I haven't watched it yet but maybe that time is coming soon so that does it for my complete Blu-ray collection 2023 I'm out of breath my arm's sore I'm still cooling down from sweating but that's always fun to kind of look at every single movie that I own talk about it a little bit I tried to tell a little story or anecdote about how I feel about every single one of them I mean it took a while I have no clue how long this video is going to be I'm about to edit it right now and post it on the same day. And I actually didn't buy as many Blu-rays this year. I've kind of tapered off a little bit, just being very selective with what I do buy. But yeah, that's my Blu-ray collection as it stands in 2023. If you guys made it to the end of this video, comment down below, hashtag finished. And thank you guys for watching. It really does mean a lot. I have so much content planned for 2023. I'm very excited about it. Be sure to hit the like button and comment down below your favorite movie from my collection and your favorite movie from your collection. Subscribe and hit that notification bell if you guys have not already. It would mean a lot. I'm trying to make the push for 70K subscribers here on YouTube, which is just crazy to say out loud. But I have tons of shorts, live streams, reaction series, videos in general, reviews, rankings, bunch of stuff coming in 2023, so you don't want to miss out on any of that. I'm about to go lay down and maybe take a cold shower to cool off, and the next Blu-ray collection will be a year from now, in 2024, which is, again, sounds like a fake year to say out loud. How many Blu-rays have I owned? Someone please let me know in the comments. But that's a wrap for my Blu-ray collection 2023. I'm about to pass out, <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>